Hello, Jody Skipper here. And once again, I'm off on another aquascaping adventure. This time, I'm going to my mate Pete to do an aquascape for him. It's actually a 90 centimeter, so it's a three foot aquascape. And I'm going to show you how I create it. So I'll be doing the full build. Hopefully it's something I get a little bit of inspiration from. A few hints and tips. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this one guys. For now, see you soon. Well, here I am, Peter's tank, nice and clean, he got it all ready to go yesterday, so time to escape, let's go. Okay, so yeah, we've got all the equipment ready, we've got the sand, gravel we're going to use, the aquarium soil, the stones, which is serious stone. We've mixed here, like a substrate base, and this is a mixture of crushed lava stone, some sea chem matrix, and some crushed, crushed, and some crushed flourish tabs so that'll be a nice base layer I'll explain later in the video why we're going to have a nice nutrient rich base plants over here I've got plenty of plants from Peter's old scape we've got a mix of ferns which is going to be very fern heavy this scape so that's everything good to go okay so here we've got more plants and you can see these huge swords we're going to use for the backdrop as well as some other plants but this is also the home for the fish so in this container we've got the actual filtration run as well so here we've got the filter running which is Nawazi Biomaster Thermo 600 keep that uh, media nice and mature and obviously keep the environment for the fish while they wait for the new home so let's start the concept with this one is going to be a triangular stroke island composition and to be honest, I feel like I'm cheating a bit because this wood is just amazing. So it's just so easy to escape. So yeah, I feel like I'm cheating. <laughs> but this is a good thing if you're doing your own escape at home. If you get that amazing piece of wood, it's not exactly hard work, is it? I mean, look at that instant impact with that gorgeous piece of wood. The wood is Kobo Catfish wood. Stunning. Little story about this piece of wood. It used to be mine and I was going to use it in a setup I had planned but um, that went pear shaped <laughs> so I didn't have a tank big enough for it and Peter was hinting on for it so I sold them in <laughs> and now I look I didn't think why did I sell it shocking but anyways that's the story of that wood nice piece of wood so we'll just get this in position okay so the wood's in position didn't really have to do much but what were the stuff we took into consideration was for maintenance so there's plenty of room at the front to get your hand in when you do maintenance at the side there the soil is going to be quite high but at least you can get maintenance to clean it scrape the glass etc and it's got a good position for when peter's sitting in his sofa which is just to the right got a really good view of it as well on the other sofa which is at the back of the room so front on and from the right hand side it looks cool hopefully so that's that's a wood position how easy was that with such a nice piece of wood okay so next job is to start placing the stone so in this case we've got serious stone or mini landscape rock probably the most popular stone in the hobby and you can see why full of detail great stone to use but when I create an aquascape that obviously looks nice with the stone and make it look natural but also that's going to act as a barrier to keep the soil back because it will be quite uh, a lot of soil goes in the back of the scape so we'll start creating that barrier while making it look nice and natural as well.
so here I'm just using this little funnel little idea from Peter there to just put some gravel which will cover the base to stop the soil running through good little idea so it's a good size of gravel to do that so the more we can stop the soil the soil the more we can stop the soil coming through the better Here I'm using the good old tissue trick toilet roll with liquid glue to help secure the stone of the wood to stop the wood floating and keep it nice and secure during maintenance. So yeah, just using the, the toilet roll tissue, push that down. Then we use the liquid glue, make sure there's plenty on and that will cause a reaction which will secure it nice and tight. Great little trick. And when you look at smokes, how cool is that? Get your eyes a kite mind. So make sure your head's not in the tank at this stage, because as you can see that smoke coming up, it knocks you out. <laughs> so next stage, we're gonna be adding the substrate. So I'm gonna build a bit of a substrate system First up, we're going to use the base layer we were talking about before, which is a mix of crushed lava stone. We've got crushed um, CKM flourish tabs in there and some CKM matrix, some old CKM matrix. So this will create a nice base layer. So we'll put that in. Just a thin layer on the bottom. So now we're adding aquarium soil with this one is Tropicart aquarium soil, really good soil. And we'll just pour this in. I said earlier the reason why we're building such like a nutrient rich substrate and it's because we're going to be using some swords, some Amazon swords, which are really greedy root feeders, hence using this. So the better nutrition we can give those, the better for the plant. Okay, so hardscape's nearly complete. Peter's just adding some sand to finish it off. And I'm really pleased with it. Um, I think it's looking really good. What about you, Peter? What do you think of hardscape? Really good. Brilliant. Hardscape's looking really good. I'm <coughs> really, really pleased with this one. Just a bit more sand to put in. And then we'll add some further details with little stones. So um, Peter's... Oh, Peter, have you ruined the whole video with that oh. top on? I've done something wrong there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, for those who don't know, Geordie Skater, I'm from Newcastle area, Newcastle fan, that's what you call us from the northeast of England, Geordies. Then you've got the Mackhams, who are Sunderland fans, and that's what Peter is, with that horrible red and right top on. If I knew he had that, we could have used that to secure the wood instead of the bog roll. <laughs> could have used Newcastle shit sticks, doesn't it? Oh, God. Right, oh no. Well, there you go. Son of Newcastle lover. Okay, last little part of the hardscaping is adding details. And a little tip with this, if you've got some leftover stone, so if you obviously use large pieces, you can just smash that up using a mash hammer with your safety goggles. <laughs> just um, add that, and the best way to do it is just let it roll in front of the stone so it's quite natural obviously you remove some pieces of it doesn't look right here and just add those details not with a pebble where'd that come from <laughs> so again just grab your stones 
and add those smaller details. One little tip for you as well, the likes of this stone, these smaller stones, I've left them loose, some of obviously had to secure out of the wood, but the ones that are loose, a good little tip is if they become covered in algae, you can just actually flip them upside down, obviously remove them, give them a clean, so that's a nice little tip for that. But yeah, adding those little details makes all the difference, just makes it look that little bit more natural, as if the stone's corroded up that time, type of thing. Right, time to plant. So we've got a massive variety and amount of plants off Peter's old scape. So what we're gonna do is just start planting. We've got a rough idea what we're gonna do, like focal point plants and the large plants at the back. But you realize we're just gonna see how much shade we've got to know which plants we're gonna put in what area. So as I go, I'll tell you what plants I'm using and um, we'll just go with that. So. Let's do it. Yeah, so I was saying massive range of plants. So these are the background plants, loads of anubias, ferns, crips. Like I say, I'll overlay because I'm not 100% sure what type we've got at the minute, but I'll overlay the plants as we go. So let's go. We're going to start with the background plants. So we've got these good size swords. We'll start with those. Right, as I was saying, I'm going to start with the swords. I'm going to try this little technique, see if it works. Peter's just suggested it, so using this screwdriver, we'll make a little hole. So I reckon the first middle-ish about there. I'm hitting wood, typical. So not there. <laughs> Why is that not going to hit wood? That's it. So I've got a spot there, make a nice little hole. Hey Peter, that's a good tip. <laughs> it's working. All right. So. Passes the littlest one, the littlest one. Yeah. So we've made a little hole. And then we'll just place this in. Oh, jobs are good. That's one down, two to go. Okay, so a second sword. Get that in position. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit awkward like. Get that in. I'm over the moon with that idea, like. You've got to make sure when you're planting these They've got to be firm and make sure they're well in, so put them low down because otherwise when you fill they'll just end up floating and it makes it more difficult to plant once the water's in. So just push down on the base like you do with in, in the garden, compact it down and just add a bit more soil around it. So that's a little tip for that. Much easier than using tweezers with this plant, the size of it. But yeah, I think that's a really good idea, using that screwdriver, the other side of it make a nice hole, put it in, compact it down, little push. So the next bit is to find a nice focal point because we've got a huge fern, a narrow leaf fern, which we're going to use. And I think we're looking somewhere around there or around here to create that nice focal point. So I think I'll place this fern around here, this wedge in, hopefully that'll go Wedge right at the back, and that is our main focal plant in place. Yeah. With it being an epiphyte, it'll attach itself to the wood via its roots, and that'll be nice and secure in a few weeks. So there you go, first focal plant in. When you 
planting as you plant it's important to keep yeah, the face wet especially ferns you don't want these to dry out so just give everything a good soak as you go because this light is really hot it dries them out really quick so it's just important that you keep those wet okay so we've done the narrow leaf fern now just now I've planted the trident fern so these are nice two clumps and it's mad how crazy big impact it's got off having already established plants so trident fern nice cluster trident fern there and we've tried to position it so it's facing out or facing from left to right so it doesn't go into the glass too much but to a certain extent we've done the best we can with that so trident fern narrow leaf fern and in the background we've got the sword again i'm not sure which sword it is but i'll overlay so so far so good mm -hmm. here i'm planting blixat chaponica so we're just going to put that at the background here and get some light so it's not a background plant but we'll put it near the rocks so we'll get like a nice full bushy effect eventually next plant we've got Cryptochlorine parva, which is the smallest of the crypt species. So we'll just find some space there next to the stone. Not there. And there you go. I'm not 100% sure how this will grow in the shade, but we'll give it a try. Because generally crypts like shade, but I think parva not as much. But we haven't got loads of soil to plant in, so we'll try in different areas and hopefully they go okay. So in between the parva here, I'm just going to plant some sterogyny repens. Let them blend within with each other. So in the more shaded areas underneath the fern, we're going to plant some bigger crypt species. I think this is Cryptochorine Wendii Tropica. Can't be 100% sure, but he has a question for you guys in the comments. Which crypt do you think that is? I'll try and get it closer for you. So that's the crypt. Some of them do look similar, like brown and Tropica, for example, look quite similar. But yeah, crypts like shade, so we can plant this in the shaded areas. Crypts may melt, they're well known for crypt melt. If they do, don't worry, as long as they've got a healthy rootstock, which this one has, it'll quickly develop new leaves. I say quickly, not quickly, because it is a bit of a slow grower, but it will eventually grow new leaves. So don't worry about that. This next plant, never used it before, but it looks a little beauty. This is Ligandra species red, and I do believe it's a nephrophyte. So we'll place it just in this little crevice, and Peter can see how it goes. Fingers crossed, it goes in nice, nice little plant there. Yeah, so that's Ligandra species red. New to me. Next plant, we'll have Bucephalandra thea which is a gorgeous plant peter loves this plant so we're definitely using this bus of land species there's no crevice to put this on so what we're going to do is attach that with glue and eventually the roots hang and it looks really natural so yeah bus of landra thea if you can see that very popular plant so we'll just attach a small amount of gel type glue and then using where the rhizome of the plant is, just firmly press that. Watch your fingers, usually best to wear gloves when using glue. But that's it, so easily done. Very nice. Next up, one of my all time favorites, Anubius Petite. I think it's petite anyways, it looks that way. So we'll just find a nice space for that. Look at the size of that bad boy. 
and just screws in as best we can. And you be a slight shade. If you don't put it in the shade area, it tends to be prone to algae, green algae spots on the leaves, which totally ruins it. So we'll place that so it's shaded by the ferns. Just snip a few leaves off. So any leaves you see full of holes are not looking too good, you can just nip them away and keep the best growth. And there you go. Stunning when you've got nice established ones. Looks lovely. Yeah, so that's a new base petite. Just there, nice and shaded. So that's it, pretty much done with the escape. Apart from, we need to fill it. Just a few little pointers, things were covered. We tidied the light up, smart and the light up by just leading the cables and the wiring behind the actual frame using cable ties to secure that so it's all nice, neat and tidy. Also, I don't know if you noticed, we've got this little backlight. Peter just put together a really inexpensive light that looks the biz. What I'll do, we'll just switch it off. And switch it on. See the difference? Magic, eh? Cheers, Peter. <laughs> Lots of little finishing touches to make everything look nice and tidy and clean. We'll be doing the same with the glassware, etc. Getting everything nice, clean and tidy so it doesn't like take anything away from the scape. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please, please hit that subscribe button. Really does help me out in the world of YouTube. Is this the type of aquascape we like to have at home? If so, just leave a comment below. Always nice to read your comments. Yeah, to summarise, this scape was a nice triangular composition. An idea was low maintenance to make it a bit easier for Peter so he wasn't constantly trimming stems like he was in his previous scape, which was a stunner, but that was the aim of the game with this one. So I really enjoyed this scape. I would happily have this at home, but jealous actually. So Peter, you happy with this scape? 100%. I can enjoy the fish a lot more. Oh yeah, we will get the fish in and look lovely. And obviously I'll put some nice footage. I'll come to Peter's in a couple of weeks time. Get some nice footage with the fish in so you guys can see what it looks like once it's all settled a bit. So, thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it. Till next time, see you later.